dynamics of any ecosystem depend on two main processes, the recycling of nutrients and the flow of energy through the ecosystem. With energy flow, we observe energy going in one direction. The sun continuously provides the energy that is captured by producers. These are then consumed by consumers to provide them with energy. Eventually, all the energy that was captured from the sun is lost as heat, which is why we need a continuous supply of light energy. Nutrients, on the other hand, are not replenished, so they must be recycled in an ecosystem. Atoms from the air, water and soil are taken up by organisms and incorporated into their bodies. When an organism is consumed, the atoms are transferred to the body of the consumer. Eventually, the atoms are released back into the environment through excretion or decomposition. Organisms and the environment pass the atoms back and forth in what are known as biogeochemical cycles. Three important elements that cycle through ecosystems are nitrogen, phosphorus and carbon. Let's take a closer look to see how each of these elements is recycled. Nitrogen is a component of DNA and of proteins and thus is an essential component of all organisms. Despite making up 78% of the Earth's atmosphere, most organisms are unable to use nitrogen gas directly. Most of the nitrogen available to the organisms in an ecosystem comes from nitrogen fixation carried out by certain soil bacteria. Bacteria that live on the roots of lagoon plants, for example, are able to convert atmospheric nitrogen gas into ammonia, a form that is usable by plants. After plants take up the fixed nitrogen, other organisms can obtain it by consuming the plants. Nitrogen is excreted from animals in urine and feces. When an organism dies, decomposers such as bacteria and fungi break down proteins into individual amino acids. Specialized bacteria then process the nitrogen in these amino acids into nitrates, which can be stored in the soil. Some of the soil nitrates are picked up by plants that are able to use nitrogen in this form, and some soil nitrates are processed by denitrifying bacteria, releasing nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere. In addition, human industrial practices release nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere as air pollution. Phosphorus is a major component of the cell membrane, ATP and DNA. In contrast to the carbon and nitrogen cycles, the phosphorus cycle does not have an atmospheric component. That is, phosphorus does not exist in a gaseous form. Environmental phosphorus is mostly found in the form of calcium phosphate, found in rocks and soils, and it's released from eroding rocks to enter the water system. Plants absorb phosphates from the soil or water and incorporate them into the tissues. Phosphorus is then transferred to consumers when they eat the plants. Phosphorus is returned to the soil by the action of decomposers that break down animal waste and the bodies of dead organisms. Bacteria then convert organic phosphorus back to phosphate. In freshwater lakes, phosphorus is available in small amounts. However, agricultural fertilizers and other industrial chemicals contain phosphorus, so runoff from farms and industrial pollution can cause an increase in available phosphorus. This can be a problem because too much phosphorus can lead to eutrophication. During this process, there's a rapid growth of photosynthetic algae due to the increase in nutrients. After the algae die, they're consumed by bacteria that use oxygen in the process, leading to a drop in dissolved oxygen and putting the lives of aquatic species at risk. The last biogeochemical cycle that we will look at is the carbon cycle. Carbon forms the basis of all biological molecules, and so it's essential for life. Carbon is found in its gaseous form as atmospheric carbon dioxide, as well as in fossil fuels and dissolved in the ocean waters. Plants take up carbon dioxide and convert it into organic carbon through photosynthesis. Consumers then eat plants and the organic carbon molecules are broken down by cellular respiration, releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. 
Carbon is also stored in living organisms because the main biomolecules that make up organisms are carbon-based. When organisms die, some of the carbon is returned to the atmosphere by decomposers. Large amounts of carbon are stored in limestone from ancient ocean creatures buried millions of years ago. As these rocks erode, carbon is released into aquatic environments. In addition, carbon dioxide can also diffuse into water directly. If dead organisms are buried deep within the earth and subjected to heat and pressure over millions of years, they can be converted into fossil fuels. These are a source of stored carbon, and this carbon remains outside of the carbon cycle until the fuels are used. The burning of large amounts of fossil fuels by humans has resulted in the release of large amounts of carbon back into the atmosphere, and this, together with the burning of wood, is contributing to global climate change.